Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma and Brian E. Roach. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, and welcoming back a good friend of ours. It's been a minute. It's been a while. It's been a long time. Welcome back a one, Mr. Brian E. Roach to the show. What's going on, Brian? I, I don't know. You Nothing. don't know. Has there been business? Has there been things that have happened? I don't know. Well, the Steel- I've, I've, I've been distracted. The Steelers <laughs> have made some very heavy-hitting signings, probably since the last time. Zach and I were on a week ago. Not any real big news. You got the league meetings that are going on right now where uh, there's a game in Brazil. The Eagles are going to be doing whatever. You got Amazon Prime exclusives, Peacock exclusives being announced. Hard Hard Knocks is going to cover a whole division in season. They got rid of the swivel hip drop tackle. They changed the kickoff rule. Um, so, I mean, there's stuff going on. There's interviews. Art Rooney's got an interview. Omar Khan's been doing the circuit. Mike Tomlin's been doing the circuit. There's been a couple of lower profile signings. I would say, uh, I think Van Jefferson may have happened right after Flash and I were on, uh, the previous Monday and then, uh, Quez Watkins. And we'll talk about that as part of our free agency fallout and the new Steelers needs. But any thoughts, uh, because you haven't been on for so long, we're going to go like position by position groups and stuff. And you'll get a little, you'll get a chance to opine my friend and I will try and bite my tongue and not add <sighs> too much. But uh, what do you think about all the stuff overall that's going on with the Steelers? Do you have like a, what was this? Maximus, Ceridius, Max, Decimus, like thumbs up, thumb middle, thumb down. Like, uh, I think my thumb is firmly right here. Okay. Fair um, enough. That's where I'm at right now until the yeah. draft. I'm I'm not willing to to be down on any of the moves they've made. I'm not willing to be up on any of the moves they've made. Um, I I have said I you know remember back 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 in the day when I was actually on uh, on occasion. Um, you and I <laughs> got into a little a little little argument about whether or not uh, an argument is I say that in the in the least De- strong terms debate a disagreement a spat. Okay. About a three tier, a three headed competition with Justin Fields. And I, and I, I get that. And I know we don't have that right now either, but I, I want to stress that at the, at that point in time, I was pretty clear in saying, I, if we got Justin Fields, it would have to be for something small, right? I wasn't going to give up a second. Maybe I'd have gone third or fourth and I'd have been okay with it, but I wanted it to be small. So I'm kind of, on this level with the Justin Fields trade, because it's a six and I get it. They're not going to sign him to his extension. You know, they're not going to pick up his fifth year option, nor should they, but maybe if they do a gap deal of something that they can keep him on for cheaper and see what happens, I'm okay with it. Cause basically it didn't cost them anything. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, The Russell Wilson deal again, doesn't really cost them much money wise. Um, It's if you want to look at it this way, it costs them Kenny Pickett. Right. Well, yeah, that's that's where I was going to go with this because would you have been okay with the Justin Fields move if they got rid of Pickett but didn't sign Russell Wilson? Because I wouldn't know as a backup quarterback. I'm completely fine with the Justin Fields move to have him as a backup, but to be a starter, there's still people out there despite the language and things that have been thrown out saying Wilson is the starter straight from the horse's mouth. The other principals that have been up on the podium and whatnot, like Wilson, like Mike Tomlin, and then there's still people that are trying to say, oh, it's going to be a battle or, oh, Russell Wilson going to get cut. Well, it's very strong. Like, you know, they don't have a whole lot of investment in either guy, but they also don't have a whole lot in the coffers right now. They're kind of, they're kind of, they're kind of riding with this. We'll start with quarterback because I think it's not the a new need following free agency. They got a defined starter that's a veteran and they've got an experienced backup in place. Plus they have a semi-experienced QB3 and Kyle Allen that they yep. just signed. Let me let me throw this on blast here. I was going to pick up our, I wouldn't say good friend, Andrew Filipponi from 93.7 The Fan, because I don't think he's one of our friends at all. But um, he tweeted out something that was just kind of, well, stupid. Well, I mean, <laughs> Which let's, is, let's, let's I, caveat this by saying, if there's a king of bad takes on <laughs> on the on the X over there, 
Uh, it's Pony. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm trying to find out. Of course, I have it on my phone. And I'm trying to find it to throw um, up on the screen here, and I, I can't find it. He must have. Um... Maybe he. Oh, here it. we go. Oh, there you it. go. I found it. Yay! You know, we got a. Oh, I tell you, sometimes like the things you try and find and look for here on the old on the X or Twitter, they just don't. But this guy tweets so damn much, anyways. This was actually from yesterday, but this is a bad take that needs to be exposed. Kyle Allen means the Steelers won't be drafting a QB unless it's Jordan Travis very late, and they could redshirt him. No Spencer Rattler, no Michael Penix Jr. I'm okay with that. I love how media types will say we know we can't get the best quarterbacks that are in the draft. Because there might be four going in a row at the very top is the strong rumor. We saw it a few years ago with the whole Trey Lance and everybody else, Zach Wilson. Those classes, three guys in a row, three in a top five, whatever it might be. So we will settle for the guy that's like the fifth best in his class. And, and oh, they're going to have high hope. Spencer Rattler. Oh, they can redshirt this guy and he'll turn into, you know what? We had this before. This was Josh Dobbs. This was Landry Jones. This was even Mason Rudolph. And even used a one on Kenny Pickett. And look how quickly everyone turns. But right now, during the draft, these guys have such great upside, Brian, that they could get him late. He's such a bargain. 31 other teams aren't going to want him, and he will be a future Hall of Famer just because the Steelers will draft it. This stuff just drives me insane. I just I don't I don't get it. It's like maybe they just don't want to waste a pick. Kyle Allen signing doesn't mean a whole lot to me. Kyle Allen maybe they, needs emergency quarterback at best. They had to, they had to, and they're going to end up with a fourth quarterback one way or the other, mm -hmm. right? If Kyle Allen is the fourth quarterback, then he's the fourth quarterback, right? They just, they can't go into camp knowing where they are, right? And, and let's be realistic. Quarterback is not on their draft list need right now. No, it's that, just not. It's so, off the radar. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just, you just reset the quarterback room you're not looking to draft a quarterback in the first four rounds. Now, if you're sitting at 20 and, and the, one of the top four quarterbacks happens to fall, I, you might consider it, but no, that's, you know, the thought that that's going to happen is unlikely, right? Uh, you know, unless you use the PFF uh, mock draft simulator, as I often do, and then you can get any of them anywhere <laughs> at any time. Um, <laughs> Joe Alt in the seventh round or something like that, right? Yes, yes, exactly. So. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's unlikely uh, that, that that's going to occur. And it's not, I mean, they're going to do their due diligence, right? Because they always do. And they're going to say they're doing their due diligence. But they don't expect at 20, one of the top four quarterbacks to go and, and drop and be there. And even if it does happen, there's probably a reason it happens. And they aren't, they still aren't jumping on it. It's unlikely, right? They're not yeah. drafting a quarterback in first, second, third, fourth round, I don't think. You know, and besides, like I said, PFF says uh, that uh, Penix will be there in the seventh. So we'll just take him then. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, and very well, we know these things don't ever pan out. Like Penix could go first round. Penix could go third round. They don't ever play out the way that, you know, we try to put exactly. everything in a box on social media. There's always that like draft darling that falls out of round one. Look at last year. Now there were only 31 picks in the first round last year because Miami got docked. Steelers had picked 32. Guess who was first rounder? Guess who was in the green room that didn't get picked on day one? Went to the Steelers at the top of the second round. Joey Porter Jr. Is he really a second rounder? I just I I hate. I know for all intents and purposes, and you know a lot of times I'm a black and white stats. This is the facts. This is what it says. This is written in stone type of guy, but. Joey Porter, you get like, you know, it's a top 50 pick. I'd rather say top 50, top 100, something like that. Yeah, very well, it could be, but they have so many other needs that are going on. Basically, you're getting um, Kyle Allen as, a, as a, a QB3 might allow you to do some extra drills and things at camp. It's unlikely that they want to put a rookie in that place. Himself, Allen is a uh, formerly undrafted player. Six, uh, six years in the well, yeah, six years in the league. He has played a game every single season. Two at Carolina, two at Washington, and then one with Houston and another with Buffalo. Last season, he has about 704 attempts. Career, 62.6 over 4734 yards, 26 touchdowns, 21 interceptions. So, in six seasons, he's actually thrown more than Kenny Pickett has when it comes to touchdowns or whatever. But it just goes to show you, 
even with the Pickett thing. Now they moved on. Maybe they could be wrong. Maybe something happens and Kenny Pickett balls out with the Eagles, all the better for him, whatever. But we've talked about this long before Ben Roethlisberger was even retired about how much of a crapshoot the quarterback position is in the NFL. So you're trying to revitalize a veteran career or actually maybe even two of them. One's a reclamation project of a guy that has a hell of a resume in Russell Wilson that I said formerly was one of my favorite players when he wasn't with the Steelers. And I've come around on it. Maybe he won't be as bad as he was with the Broncos. Maybe last year he wasn't actually as bad well, as you I thought. I was going to say, let's think about that. He didn't yeah. have a great first season with the Broncos. No. But his not great first season was still sort of better than either of the last two seasons we experienced. Yeah. Last year was a different story, right? And this is, again, look at, you know, I don't, don't pull up the stats. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not a stats guy the same way you are, but just look at the overall season. Forget the fact that, you know, their defense gave up 70 points one time. You know, he had a much higher volume of touchdowns, a much better season overall, and he didn't even play the last couple games because they benched him. So, I, you know, well, I don't think he was necessarily bad last year. Yeah, I think he that was. Team was bad. <laughs> and there, yeah, it, and like, but Brian, people say, well, the Steelers, uh, the Broncos had a bad offensive line. They had bad offensive coaching. Uh, the Steelers have better weapons. And I like look around and I'm like, did the Steelers have a better line? Did they have a better offensive coordinator? Did they did they really have better weapons? Like there was Deontay. I, I was thinking about this. We're gonna get into wide receivers, but I want to put the bow on quarterback too. Individually, like when you look at a full body of work, Russell Wilson's last season, you go, oh yeah, that's great. He has more of this or more of this. When you look at individual games, some of that stuff was garbage time. Some of that's playing from behind, maybe because it's a bad team. But capability wise, you have to believe at least in a veteran quarterback that he nudges you from if Pickett and Trubisky were even like lower ranked than 32nd, which would be the bottom of 32 starting quarterbacks, even if they're like 34th or something, where does Russell Wilson get you to? 26, you know what I mean? It's it's an uptick, but how much of an uptick? And of course, Justin Fields, I think, is like a swap of picket as far as development and young quarterbacks and maybe I, just I, doesn't have it, you know? I will disagree slightly. Here's what I will yeah. agree with. I believe that as it stands right now, both the quarterbacks, forget Allen at the moment, but the other two quarterbacks are both better than Kenny Pickett. That's my statement. That's okay. Um, I'm I'm and, not against that that statement because you're you're looking at potential, and, right. and it's well, all potential and it's all Russell risk, Wilson right? is a better quarterback than yes. Kenny Pickett. Yes, right. Justin Fields, I believe, has the potential to be a better quarterback than Kenny Pickett. Now, whether or not he ever turns into that, same thing is true with Kenny Pickett. As we said all along, Kenny Pickett showed some moxie. He showed some talent for some late comebacks. But he stunk a lot of the time. And we said that repeatedly. I'm like, I, you know, it's three quarters of pew for one quarter of yay. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, whether he was going to be able to take that magic and spread it over four quarters and become a true franchise quarterback, or whether he was going to kind of always be the guy that maybe had one or two drives in him during a game, sometimes late, sometimes not. I, you know, I, I, who knows? I, it's a straight, and I, you know, I'm not going to get into all the, he ran away from competition kind of stuff. I'm not going to downplay Kenny Pickett. He did some good things when he was here. I was never sold on him. I had said that repeatedly. I didn't want him to be the pick at 20 when he was. I said that on draft night, even though we all knew he was going to be the pick. <laughs> I didn't want him to pick him. Um, oh, we, so didn't. Not, we thought Malik Willis could have been the pick. And whoo. Well, yeah, see. I mean, we we said that year it was a historically bad quarterback class, and and I think that that has proven out. I you know I didn't know that there was a franchise quarterback in that class. I still don't know the answer to that. Um, but I do you know it is an odd scenario to say I'm in my third year rookie deal, whatever. I'm going into my fourth. I don't want to play. You, you told me I can't start, even though you sort of told me there was competition. I didn't even want to try and fight with Russell Wilson. Instead, I'll go to the someplace else. Just trade me. I'm sure he didn't ask to go to the Eagles. Um, you know, he didn't get. He probably didn't get the same clemency from uh, the con artist that Justin Fields apparently got 
from his yeah, GM. I, I don't buy that anyways. I really don't. How many suitors I, I, did Field, Fields is, would have been gone if he had that many suitors already or for I whatever the price I don't think he had was. that many suitors. I agree yeah. with that. I do think that he probably – there were probably some suitors that he didn't want to play for, but – I'm sure he was okay with whatever. Whatever the GM's going to do, what the GM's going to do. I what I really think is they, they you know, there's. I don't buy the story that they had way better deals on the table for him. Yeah, it, they because, passed on it to give him to this deal. Yeah, you're Mister Drafted Sanity here. You're not going to pass on a third or a second or a third just because you ask the player where they want to go. Like that just seems yeah. silly to me. Uh, but my, I think my main point with all the quarterbacks are. Steelers are set with what they got. This is the course they chose. Yeah. They didn't want to go the same. They know Trubisky was like, yeah, we can't go back to that. They were talking with Mason, but they already had Pickett, and Wilson became a strong reality. And it was like, well, you're taking a risk kicking the tires on all of these names. Wilson, Fields, Pickett, Rudolph, and not all four of them could be like, you know, completely out of earshot in a year or two. You know what I mean? We we have to make excuses or we have to, uh, I don't want to say like always excuses. You have to give consideration for, okay, was this bad because of this? Was this good because of that? And, and, and you're kind of like weigh that in and then see how it works out. It's really, it's, it's a different life when you don't have a Hall of Fame or future Hall of Fame franchise 100%. quarterback on the roster. You're grading levels of crap, right? Um, <laughs> you know, it's like this is the hot Italian sausage crap from last night versus, you Taco know, Bell. some Taco Bell. Uh, but the, the thing is, there's no guarantee that this is going to work. But what they knew is it wasn't working with what they had. Bingo. And they believe that this was a chance to get better, right? <laughs> it might all crash and burn. Russell Wilson may be done and he may stink. Justin Fields may never turn into anything and he may stink, right? All those things could happen. And if they are, guess what? They're not in any worse position than they were before uh, because Correct. they were going to have to start over again anyway. They did this and it cost them nothing. Okay. That's the key. A sixth round pick and a little bit of cash it, it'll, you know, think of what people get. Think of what they gave up to get Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> you know, when when that draft went on, think of what Cleveland gave up for. You know, Mister, I haven't played a full season in a hundred years. Um, <laughs> you know, that, that's of, exactly it. The 49ers for Trey Lance, nothing. like all these teams, the Panthers to move up for Bryce Young. Somebody's going to do will, something similar this year. I guarantee I'll it. take this deal a hundred million times in a row versus any of those other deals. Because as much as people are like, oh, it'll put them back in the same, it won't put them back in the same boat at a deficit, right? No. It, yes, they may be in the same boat where they're looking for a quarterback, but they're not hamstrung. When they get back in that boat, it doesn't have 15 leaks because they gave away all the plugs, right? I'm better off. That, this. Yes, that's a great analogy for that. It's like with Kenny Pickett, they didn't give up anything. They just used the pick that they had. Yes. And I still don't buy that he was going to fall into the third round. I've talked about that a bunch of times. Somebody else is either jumping into the first because of a fifth year option, keeping a cheap quarterback, or he would have went at the top of the second somewhere. And he would have been a top 50 pick regardless. And I don't think the Steelers would have been back in play for that. And there was even talk about some of the teams that reached out, like the saints were in that conversation, like the Eagles, et cetera, et cetera. The saints had, they had the ammunition. We thought he might've ended up there to begin with, but this isn't about Pickett. And uh, the best uh, comment I saw floating around somewhere was, I think you might agree with this. Uh, Pickett might be a product uh, of one of the first or the way these players now deal with the transfer portals. There's a little more entitlement, NIL money. This won't be the first or the last now that we see of like young players making certain ransom demands or whatever. So we can speculate to the cows come home as to why he asked for whatever. Doesn't really matter at this point, but I don't think the Steelers, if they add anybody undrafted or it's going to be a very late pick, probably a camp body like Chris Oladokun or somebody like that. Uh, a duck Hodges, somebody comes to camp, they could win the third job if they show a, a, enough. And who knows, they could add somebody else that's just like another afterthought uh, journeyman, journeyman type guy that bounces around the league, maybe has more experience, maybe fits what they want to do. Well, 
you know. Let's let's say this. They will get a fourth quarterback at some oh, point. Oh, absolutely. They, they won't go to camp without a fourth body, right? So whoever that fourth quarterback is could be anywhere. Could come from anywhere. It could be a draft pick at in six or seven, you know, or how many rounds there are. I can't even remember. Whatever, the last couple picks. Um, it could be, as you said, a journeyman who's just bouncing around. It could be an undrafted rookie free agent that comes in that way. They will have a fourth body, but they're not looking anywhere of consequence in the draft for a quarterback. They're just not. Yep. I think we can put that one the rest post free agency. It's just really, it's rather odd having talked about all of this last season and through this season that everything's just wiped clean. It could be again next year if it doesn't work. But like you said, does not yep. handcuff them. They want to use a pick next year. If they completely stink, they move up the boards. Great. That was the path I was looking for anyways. Hey, if Pickett stunk, well, if Pickett stunk, now. if Rudolph I, stunk. I wanted nobody... them to just let Mitch play for a year, and then we could have drafted uh, you know, some guy from Ohio State. But <laughs> <laughs> he probably would have if Mitch would have played the entire time. I still can't believe that clown won in overtime against Cincinnati, coming right out of the Super Bowl on the road. It just goes to show how good the Steelers defense is. Now, people will say you're sacrificing a year. You're sacrificing another year. TJ Watt and Cam Hayward and Minka and all these other guys. That's the reason why Wilson's in there. Somebody with his resume, maybe they feel Mike Tomlin said there's a lot of meat on the bone for Justin Fields. He feels we'll see. With if Arthur Smith coming, right? Yeah. With Arthur Smith coming, this is their best chance to try and take advantage of the time that, that exists, right? There isn't. Think about it. Are you, it is literally 100% a crapshoot drafting a rookie quarterback and trying to go for it. The, the best other option would have been spend all your damn money on Kirk Cousins, which they were never going to do. And he ain't won nothing either, so whatever. But drafting a, drafting a quarterback, just look at last year, right? Went nuts to get Bryce Young. What did Bryce Young show last year? Not not a whole hell of a lot. Doesn't mean he won't turn into something, but he, he certainly didn't win you anything in that window, right? So if your concern is the T.J. Watt, Cam Hayward window, this is the best route you have. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. And you look at the quarterbacks that are still out there, Ryan Tannehill. I think Teddy Bridgewater's now retired or retiring Nate Sudfeld. Some of this may not be uh, completely updated either on over the cap because like Kyle Allen's on here, but like Mar Matt Barkley, Trevor Simeon, Jeff Driscoll, Logan Woods, like that's, that's it. So there isn't a whole lot else to add to the quarterback stuff or would I and Kyle Allen? Yeah, I'm fine with that. It's a QB three. You never want to see that guy on the field to begin with. You're, you're hoping you don't even see fields on the field to begin with. That either means Wilson sucks or got hurt. And the way the NFL goes, and sixty some quarterbacks played last year, you gotta you gotta have as much as possible. Now, one of the rule changes in mentioning somebody like Kyle, and now you could roster this guy on the practice squad and still use him as an emergency quarterback that dresses yep. on Sunday. So the league changed that. They also trade moved back the trade deadline that was proposed by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm -hmm. So with a seventeen game season, that makes a lot of sense. Move it back one more week from week eight to week nine, and that's about it for there. So. Brian, what's the next most important position the Steelers are going to target, you think? Is there a free agent? I mean, there's the, most of the free agency you're in this wave now where guys don't have the demand. It's a buyer's market now instead of a seller's market, obviously. So um, actually, you know what? Of who all was signed so far, let's jump here first before we get into the other needs. Since you get to opine, what was your favorite move? I could probably... I, I, I they could probably like guess but <laughs> you probably guess because it's about the biggest move they made but i don't know what they do i forget Pat patrick queen oh well yeah you're right um <laughs> i totally forgot I was about toward. Patrick queen like am i there is no better <laughs> thing that they can do than to make the ravens weaker and make yourself stronger yeah and people who are complaining about keep keep it up Keep the voices loud. Keep saying he can't do it. Keep saying he's only good because Rokon Smith is next to him. Keep doing it, please. Please keep doing it loudly at him. At him, you stink. You're nothing without Roquan. Please go ahead because he's going to kill everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what I was saying. I think he has a better support system with Landon Roberts. Cole Holcomb's back in his recovery. So linebacker, 
Steelers are always looking at linebackers, but they're not going to be looking high for a linebacker. They got a rotation of three dudes there that should all be able to be green dot eligible and uh, captain level. Like the Ravens didn't really have, they don't do team captains. That's a strange thing. They right. do like a weekly uh, game day type thing, but he's definitely a voice that was in that locker room. You could hear John Harbaugh was disappointed to lose him. Uh, there was definitely a love gush fest over between Queen and Tomlin and, and some things carried over from there. And we talked about this. Like when you go back and look some of the moves that they make, it's a lot of the guys that they were originally looking to perhaps draft. It's guys they've scouted and then seen on film for like the next four years that may have improved or gotten more NFL experience. This is this is like critically important for all the people out there who are Tomlin, anti-Tomlin, right? Patrick Queen signed for less money than what top linebackers were likely to get. He, he came in at a, I know he got a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. But it's a discount over what he could have probably gotten had he stayed on the market and waited around. And one of the reasons he got that is he wanted to play for Mike Tomlin. All right. I, you know, a lot of people are going to get, you know, it's the con artist has figured it out. And yes, I give all credit to, to Omar Khan in trying to make these deals work. But that deal doesn't work if you don't have a coach that players want to play for. And Mike Tomlin is that coach. Doesn't mean he's perfect. Doesn't mean he's not going to make mistakes and he's not going to tick you off and doesn't mean he can't be stubborn in his ways. But by God, you don't get Patrick Queen if Mike Tomlin's not here. You don't get Russell Wilson if you don't. Mike Tomlin you don't isn't get there. Russell yeah. Wilson if Russell Mike Wilson, not here. Does he want to go to Atlanta or New England where they have brand new head coaches and no like defined like anything like in place? It's all newness and that's where you want to go to maybe revive your career. It could easily be a one and done. Um, it could be a one and done here, but at least you're going for Absolutely. to play with a Hall of Fame coach and a, a, and a franchise that has some stability. You know what I mean? Uh, ditto for the Giants. I mean, I feel really bad for the Giants because the Steelers could easily turn into the way the Giants are a very historic franchise that is not ever since they drafted that running back that got like tragically hurt. It's just been whew, a whole well, way, you know. Yeah. We also didn't pay somebody named Daniel Jones billions of dollars either so yeah it's it you know and that just shows how dire the quarterback <laughs> position could be so of that i mean we know linebackers not going to be a big thing what do you see as the big what's the next big need for the steelers i have a couple of them there's there's but... two that i i there's two there's the glaring obvious one that everybody knows about which is center okay all right yeah and but that's i look unless Omar Khan pulls a center out of his ass through a trade, literally, which will be painful and might require a colonoscopy. But if that happens, I would be shocked, shocked and stunned. There isn't, there isn't another, you know, free agent center I think on the market that that is worth going out after, um, unless the one guy from the Bills is still circling around. And no, no, no. Him. Mitch Morse went to the Jaguars. It's yeah, Connor. I Connor Williams, if you're trying to stay within the same uh same conference who got um seriously hurt. He's the one towards, that got hurt. Towards yeah, ACL the, week ACL, yeah. yeah, week fourteen. That was in December. So, you know, we're in March and not even April yet. So I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at. I'm like, do you get do you go and uh you know, he had a two year, fourteen million dollar contract with the Dolphins. Do you go after somebody like that? Uh, center isn't a position. I think like we're, we're wide receivers could be the other one that I'm going to talk about. That's big on my list. Right. I have another one after yeah. that, besides and, that. I mean, you could, you could probably the veteran kind of thing is kind of dwindled, but wide receivers, one where you could sign a guy and draft a guy, right. And pair up a combo kind of like I, they do with corners or anything like that over the last few years, it did it with linebacker, et cetera. Right. But center is probably not one where you're going to do that because you're not going to probably ever sit the guy you sign as a center. You want to keep no. that offensive line together and let them gel and, and progress through the season. Agreed. If you find a center, be it you decide free agency is the route you're going to go, right? And you sign a center, then that's your center, right? Even if you draft a center, right? That the signing is probably your center, unless you know because center it, it's generally not position flexible that enough. They can get a starting caliber center in the first or second round. They may have to move up in the second round to get it, but they can get a starting caliber center this year. There's at least three and maybe four of them. Um, and I I will tell you, if they don't pick a center in round one or round two, I'll be stunned. 
because that's the path I think that makes the most sense to, to getting the center. Yeah. I mean, it's basically Connor Williams and will he return to being as good as he was? He's the top ranked free agent as far as, um, centers he's played guard but they don't need another guard even in that context of let's say they find somebody else they draft a center he's going to be sitting you're not going to pay all that money i think it was two years 14 million which isn't a lot yeah, pay, that yeah. he got before with the dolphins but you already have Semaloa and you've got daniels. james daniels yeah. and you're not gonna no no yeah and do, how much do they risk how late can they go in the draft waiting you know what I mean? If you end up in the third round, we say like usually just maybe three centers, four centers, very rare for more than that in the top 100 picks. But does that put you in a similar situation as to what you had having being kind of forced to play Kendrick Green, who was a third round pick, and then it doesn't work yeah. out and you're right back with a whole bunch of brand new quarterbacks too and a new offensive coordinator. I think it got to kind of lock this one down. Yeah, it's, it's JPJ. I still don't know how to say his whole name because I forget what the hell it is. Jackson Powers Johnson. <laughs> Do the same thing, um, yeah. Too many damn names. Um, people need to have two names. I don't like three names. It, I, I'm too old. I can't figure that out. Um, the kid from Duke, who I like a lot moving into center, right? He's 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 a guard or tackle potentially, but he's going to move inside, and he, he is, he's got a mean streak in the run game. I like that kid. Um you know, uh, the kid from West Virginia, Zach Frazier. Um, and I, there's another guy that's a tackle, listed as a tackle, Futin, Fatin, Nubity, somebody. Anyway, um, those are the four guys. I know everybody's like Cedric Van Perian, the guy from Georgia. He's the next tier down in my in my book, right? Maybe he turns into a great center, but maybe he turns into Kendrick Green. Um, <laughs> so yeah. you get one of those four, which I, I you 100% can get one of them in the first round if you so choose, but the value may not be there because I think it's JPJ and maybe Barton who are potential first round hitters. I think Zach Frazier is on the brink. Um, and the, the tackle is definitely one. He could go in the first round easily as anything because he's that good. Um, so you've got a shot is, is the point. You know, you you get move you pass on it in the first round and you go to the second round, you got less of a shot. You're gonna have to move up probably. You're not gonna get them where we sit. Yeah, I agree with you. Um you got the guy with three na first names from uh Oregon. And yeah. I don't know the Steelers haven't really showed a lot of interest. I think there was whatever senior bowl or whatever, a little bit of interview, but they've been really looking at West Virginia's Zach Frazier might be able to get him in the second round. And if people like really ogle over the Oregon center, he might be there around that 50th pick or whatever, uh, wherever the Steelers are at. They have like basically the same round of picks again as they did uh, several years ago. It's the same exact numbers with the, the Kenny Pickett draft, I think with like 20 and then like 50 something. Uh, yeah. So I'm actually going to pull that up again. Cause I'm always forgetting. Uh, and, and, anyway. and I like, I'm telling you, I don't think Zach yeah. Frazier lasts to the 50 pick. If they want him, they probably have to move up to get I, I got to look and see. There's who... too many center teams. There's too many center needy teams. Miami That's needs a center. There's, there's like three, at least three teams that need centers. Um, and the Steelers are one of them and there might be four. So yeah, the Steelers are right at pick 51. I was right. That's exactly where they were like two years ago. So that's why it keeps throwing me off. Yeah. Miami. Um, I got to see like some of these teams have some players. They might be like sliding over, moving, changing. I mean, Buffalo moved on from Mitch Morris. Obviously they had that kind of in mind. I think the Broncos may have had that in mind with Cushionberry. They drafted Quinn Miners uh, several years ago. Somebody that we liked. It's kind of funny because that center class that we were looking at, like Creed Humphrey, Landon Dis Dickerson, Quinn Miners, those guys. And it's like, either some of the guys had panned out or, or like Dickerson or minors have not been playing center. Um, it's the same thing as you look back as James Daniels was drafted. Everybody's like center, center, center. And he's played interior uh, offensive line. And he's been a guard like his whole career. So and there's been speculation about that too. Would they move him? I think if they wanted to, they would have done that already. I, I don't think and, and, I, he's, it's been too long. It's, you know, yeah. yeah. And, and it's like Spencer Anderson. They drafted last year, position flexible. I mean, that's five, a, five snaps of center. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> that, not, not that flexible. Right. Uh, yeah. N n uh, the other Herbig, Nate Herbig. Yeah. Mm, mm. It, it's like, if you had to go into the season, you've at least got a center, right? A guy who can play. You've got options, but none of them are good. 
right? I mean, Herbig is not a good center. He may be a adequate center, but he's not good. And they haven't had a good one. I mean, as long as it's no. not Mason Cole snapping balls at ankles. That was like one of the things like Mark Caboli or somebody put out there. Makes no sense getting rid of these guys, blah, blah, blah. Well, they're under the cap. They didn't have to pay certain bonuses. Chooks a core for Mason Cole. They're also doing a service for the player and letting them hit the market like they did. Mitch Trubisky he got signed yep. immediately, snapped back up by Buffalo. Uh, center is definitely one that sits up there. If it's a first round pick, I will not be upset with that i will not oh, uh, I'll but be happy but we know that they did they, they want to move project jones over to left tackle they went out and they moved up and they wanted to get a left tackle is there concerns can he play left tackle or is it more or less they don't want to create another hole like right now it's still penciled in the same starters dan moore on the left they're going to have project jones on the right because dan moore for whatever reason, they will not play him on the right side because he probably cannot play on the right side and instead of creating another hole and they have no replacement Do they put two rookies on the offensive line. That's the other thing I'm thinking about. I think they might roll into this season again with Dan Moore and then having Broderick Jones, Dan Moore on the left, Broderick Jones on the right from the way that these interviews have been going at the, at the annual team it, meetings. It will not surprise me in the least if pick one and pick two are offensive linemen. It won't surprise me. Right. And, and if they do that, the reason they do that is to move Broderick Jones back over to the left. You pick the right tackle because there are very clear guys in this draft who are elite level tackles, but are right tackles, right? They're not going to play left. And then you center, right? If, it wouldn't surprise me at all for them to do that. If they do, though, and it, it, we say this, we've said this for, like, I swear to God, six years in a row. It's a historically deep draft for wide receivers because everybody wants to play wide receiver. There's a million wide receivers in this draft. They can find a wide receiver in the third round, right, to fill things out. Can they guarantee he's going to be the compliment they need to George Pickens? No. No. <laughs> but they can find a, a wide receiver. Do they need a veteran wide receiver at some point? Yes, because they're all young at this point. They need a guy somewhere, and I'm not sure that – uh, what's his name that they they signed is is that guy. Neither Van, of those Van, guys are that Van. guy. Van Jefferson. Yeah. I mean, it's in Quez Watkins. Quez Watkins was a sixth round pick. Van Jefferson was a fourth round pick. Neither of them. Now, the only argument you can make for Jefferson, I don't know. Seems like the Steelers are very much interested in the Rams trash as of late. But I liked a lot of those guys coming out like a Josh Reynolds or uh van jefferson and they just don't materialize and it's hard to do when you have cooper cup there when they add uh odell beckham or they added Allen robinson and there was always like you know uh who's the other guy i'm thinking about he, he was with the bills robert woods so they had robert woods there for a period of time so it's a it's always been a very deep wide receiver depth chart but um i guess what i'm trying to think wide receiver is definitely a need offensive line is definitely a need now there's no more tackles that are really out there to sign as far as free agents. Right. So you're going with, you're rolling with something, whether they try and patchwork something like they did with the Chris Hubbard, with a Matt Filer, like they did years ago. I don't, I don't know. You don't have the same kind of coaching that's in place to maybe coach some of those guys up. Like when you had Mike Munchak there. So that's, that's debatable, but they might have a fine. There might still be some type of trade that occurs around Good this happen. draft. That's what I think is going to happen at wide receiver. I think there's like, there's not a whole lot left. There's Tyler Boyd still sitting out there. I think he's playing uh hardball, trying to get a decent deal. That's just not going to happen. And he's 30 years old. I don't think anybody's going to pay him a lot of money. Brandon Ayuk is in those kind of um, discussions. There's, there's the murmurs of, trade because he wants a bigger deal i think omar khan would pull that trigger depends what the cost is going to be it depends. depends with the cost it depends yeah. i think it's going to be like a draft day type of thing like we saw with aj brown before i don't think that the guy that we want i don't have a good feeling he's going to be there at this round in this pick that we can go in at, okay now let's pull the trigger and get one of these guys or let's sign tyler boyd could very much be one of those signings that happens in may but it could be a late yeah. signing absolutely yeah. But, but yeah, again, you're right. Tyler Boyd, I like Tyler Boyd, but Tyler Boyd's not the guy either, no. right? Um, and you know, first of all, I, ha I have to I have to uh, make a comment uh, to our dear dear friend uh, Zachadonia. The the little tip that I gave you on on Twitter, you definitely when you're at the bottom of the bag of the pretzels, right? And there's nothing but salt in the bottom. You cannot dip your finger in it and eat the, just eat the salt. That's that's not kosher. But when you take the last six, seven, eight pretzels, 
that don't have salt on them because you ate all the salty pretzels, right? That's what you do first. You're like, oh, this is not salty. I'm throwing it back in the bag. Just lick them eh. and then dip them in the salt. Now you got salty pretzel and you can get rid of all that salt and you look good and nobody nobody questions you and you can get away with doing it. No, 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 no. You do what I do when I had the chocolate covered pretzels that I had last night. They give you this like little bag. I feel like it's never really fulfilling, even though the calories would suggest otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> but you crease the bag at the bottom, kind of like a paper airplane, and then you tilt it at a 45 degree angle no, you don't and do that. shove it in your gullet, all the rest of the then, salt then, and chocolate then, pieces that are there. Then that's when people mock you and say, ew, <laughs> gross. But if you dip your pretzel in the salt, they just go, oh, that's really clever. <laughs> As you're licking the pretzel, I'm sure that's very much more sophisticated. You do the, you do the pretzel lick hey, like very hey. nonchalant. You're okay, like, oh. so they teach you <laughs> they teach you a proper pretzel lick in manner school, in etiquette school. I I, I got you. I'm following now. Yeah, that's all. That's all it is. Just okay, insane. where were anyway, we? Okay. Wide, wide receiver. Point, wide the receiver. reason I brought up Zach was the wide receiver thing, right? And because I've been, you know, I, I, Zach and I we have some banter back and forth on times, and I'm 99 percent of the time agree with everything he says. And every now and then I don't. This is one of those times I don't. I would not give up a first or a second round pick for Ayuk. I just wouldn't do it. They have other needs that, to me, I I can't give up that that level of pick. Um, and it, you know, that's just where it is. But but on draft day, if nobody else has come a calling and you can give up a third, I'm all in. Yeah, I I am too. Um, that would be a pretty big splash, and it'll probably add another one. They'll probably double dip. Um. You, you, I don't oh, think they're going to. They're, they're, you know they're going to draft a wide receiver. They don't ever not draft a wide receiver. They they need guys because Tomlin's stubborn. He's not going to play a rookie wide receiver right out the gate. Well, it, it would have no. to be a first rounder, and the you know it would have to be you know Jefferson or or Chase or somebody like that that comes out and falls in the Steelers' lap, and that they take with their first round pick. And I think he'd still hesitate putting them out there. Um, and I mean Justin Jefferson, not Van Jefferson. Van Jefferson is very clearly, even though they might not even have a wide receiver three on the roster right now, he's still my like wide receiver four or five on this team. And is that a guy that actually plays like special teams? Now, Quiz Watkins, he's a fast guy. Maybe they can get him to do some kick returns. They're doing this XFL kick return thing now that they changed the rules. I I was all for that. Uh, I know a lot of people look at it and say, oh, it's weird. I'd rather have it than nothing because I'm so sick of these like kicks that are just touchback, fair caught and everything else. Or you get the guy, Godwin, uh, Aguabuque. I'm going to like kind of motion or lay my body out of bounds and then touch the football, uh, against, I think that was against the Ravens. Right. So, um, special team that you get smart special teams play like that, but the traditional football or traditional kickoff rules were already dead. So drastic changes and drastic times call for drastic measures, right? I'm okay with that. Let's explain the new kickoff rule. Um, Hey, it's unexplainable. You need to see graphics and charts and everything like that, but it's basically, let's see, there you go. It's basically, it's it's dumb. Everyone, but the kicker. I think it's actually seven. I think it's seven players have to be on the line of scrimmage. Then the other ones could be maybe a little staggered and you have the kicker. But basically for the all intents and purposes of not getting into the nitty gritty is the returners back in a, in a landing zone area, the kickers where the kicker is, and then everybody else is lined up against each other, Braveheart style and ready to just charge at each other. And they're not coming. They're coming from like 10 to 20 yards apart instead of like a 40, mi- uh, 40, mi- um, 40 yard head of steam, you know, running at whatever pace these guys run at where they could take someone's head off. They got rid of the wedge. They've got rid of the unbalanced line. They got rid of so much with changing the rules, the fair catches, and everything like this, that at least this may allow for it. And there's other conditions where, you know, where the ball lands, touchback, things like that, that are still in play with this, this is, but this is what it'll I'm allow say. for a return at least. If the rule has changed so drastically, it requires charts and diagrams, then it's dumb. <laughs> well, I mean, we have to get used to it because I imagine when people used to drop kick and things of like that, it was a very, uh, a shock to the system of what pro football was back then. Oh, we got to get rid of the leather helmets and, you know, in hockey, we got to add face mask or, uh, you got to add the face mask in the NFL too. You know, the one bar is now out of style. Antonio Brown, you cannot have your helmet. I'm sorry. You can paint your old one to look like a Raiders helmet. Still not going to work, but yes. that's what, anyways, Antonio Brown's good kind of segue to that because I think like Quez Watkins, he might be in play as just a guy that's special teams. Uh, well, assuming most. he has so. not lost, uh, that he, he, in the process of leaving Philadelphia, he left behind his uh, fumbling issues. 
Um, if he did that, yeah, he, he had he had some spark early in his career. Look and, and looked kind of good, and then all of a sudden he couldn't remember how to hold on to the ball. So you know, yeah, I know, safe. I know. That's why I'm not high on them. They still have what um, they have Callaway and Mims and that on the practice squad too. That are guys that could be like an old uh, retread, like a like a Justin Hunter type or revived, yeah. and and could fulfill the bottom half. But we said the same thing about Hakeem Butler last year too. So they definitely need to add to this. But I'll, I'll say this much, Brian. I gave this like a lot of thought. I like Deontay Johnson. I stuck up for Deontay Johnson. Then I realized I'm like, I'm sticking up for this guy way more than I should. He had the same problem with Juju Smith Schuster when his time was here, losing footballs, fumbles, inopportune times of running backwards and losing yards when you need to move the chains. Can you, uh, and then it's not even scoring a touchdown two years ago. And I know the quarterback play in Pittsburgh stunk. So it doesn't help the arguments for him in his favor. Can we name a time? Like I think of Antonio Brown and I'm like, Oh yeah, I remember that time. Immaculate extension. I remember that time Antonio Brown kicked Spencer Landing in the face on a punt return. I remember the time Antonio Brown flipped it to the end zone. I remember the time Antonio Brown caught this ball in the back of the corner of the end zone against the Jaguars and kept both feet in or a ball against the helmet. We have George Pickens is making matrix type catches and George Pickens, uh, Kenny Pickett finding him out of the slot game winner against the Raiders, immaculate reception game or do you see where I'm getting at? Where's our Deontay Johnson highlights? Is there Listen, any Deontay Johnson he, highlights or are they all lowlights? Are we going to miss the them? Deontay was a great route runner, right? The problem is great route runners who don't add effort. And I have I have said this. I have said this since his rookie year. You know I have because I've accused him of giving up on plays all over the place, right? Here's the thing about Antonio Brown. As much as he lost his mind after Vontez Perfect hit him in the head, before all of that, Antonio Brown gave a billion percent effort on every single play. He didn't take plays off, right? Correct. He blocked. He did everything. He he. The reason Ben was so trusting to throw him the ball is he knew Antonio Brown would go and protect him, right? If he couldn't make the catch, he would try and make sure that the defending person didn't make the pick. Whereas Don Deontay would do this. Right off his hands. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, uh, I, I, that's it. I gave it my all. <laughs> I, I tried really hard and I didn't get it. And yeah, it was not a did, second, but... second or third efforts. He did that. They laid Kenny out the dry in Miami. Same thing. Yeah, I, it's, it's the same kind of thing. I've always had that problem with Deontay Johnson. Mm. I didn't dislike Deontay Johnson. He was a skilled player. Yes, just like everybody else, I got frustrated when he ran backwards. I, it's what he did, right? It's what he did. It's how he handled things. And sometimes it was dumb because all he needed to do was get a yard and he got a first down and he ran backwards and he lost two. And so now he didn't get the first down. Mm -hmm. Am I upset that they traded Deontay Johnson? No. Do I think that they could have got more? Probably not because nobody else was offering it. Mm -hmm. Um, look, I wanted, I almost wore my hostages, not, you know, we want, we want volunteers, not hostages shirt, because that's the thing. Look, I a hundred percent buy into this now that if you come to the head, the front office and go, hi, I would like to be traded. Cause I don't want to be here anymore. You're going to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Seems that way. And the Steelers had a need at corner. They only had Joey Porter Jr. You lost James Pierre. Yeah. They released Patrick Peterson, who could be back. That was a salary could move. Be. There's some rumblings about that. He'd be a good depth piece, maybe a guy that they could use as a big slot, perhaps safety depth. He dabbled in that a little bit. Don't, don't, don't talk bad about Patrick Peterson calling him a big slut. That's rude. Uh, don't, that is don't you not call what him I said slut. there. You don't know he's a big slut. He might, he might be a very family man oriented kind of guy. I don't know. The big, the oh. big, the big nickel. That's why they call it the dime backer. You, Get you called him a big slut. Yeah, Isn't well, right? I, was, I, I like Patrick Peterson. And you know what? The Steelers, in all these moves, now they got Dante Jackson. They had to get a veteran corner. There wasn't a lot that was on the market. They weren't going to do that luxurious need, give away a ton of money, give away any kind of picks. People are like, oh, Steelers could have made that move. Who knows? Does Kansas City want to send somebody over to make a potential another contender that they have to go through? Maybe. No, they don't want to do that. That's why Kenny Pickett's in the NFC right now, and Justin Fields is in the AFC. Those teams are sending them away. They don't want to yes. see these guys. So the, the market and the need, because uh, Levi Wallace 
Dallas wasn't coming back. James Pierre probably, I mean, if they want depth and special teams or whatever, do you know who Corey Trice is right now? No, I just know that he was a seventh round pick that has an injury history. Uh, do you know who Darius Rush is? Uh, he was a guy that couldn't make a couple rosters and was on practice squads. That's about it. That's all they have besides they nailed it on Joey Porter. So now you got Dante, uh, Dante Jackson, and I think that was fair. And then you got Dante Jackson to take a pay cut which just makes that even more gravy and yeah. you moved and you moved into the top 100 with that trade of the picks. It's like, those are wins. Those are just lighting my board up there because Absolutely. Deontay Johnson, the guy who has literally no highlights as a Pittsburgh Steeler during his time. I liked Deontay Johnson, but it just never seemed like he was just kind of flat lined. There was never like a, a, like a blip that went up at any point that I could really go back and remember. Somebody will probably be like, Hey, do you remember this play? And I'm going to be like, no, uh, he was a third round pick. They could find another guy like this. They were paying yeah, him a decent absolutely. amount of money. They might not have been able to get a guy like another Joey Porter Jr. or even a Dante Jackson in the draft or whatever's still kind of uh, middling around in free agency right now. So um, corner though is still a need. They're still going to need slot. They're still going to need depth. I mean, they might be able to go with Rush and Trice. Maybe they add Peterson mm. back to this. They got to replace Sullivan. They're still trying to replace Mike Hilton from years ago. Uh, Arthur Mallette was part of that. They let Arthur Mallette, uh still, that bothers me. Mallette going to the Ravens, much less than Hilton because uh, Hilton was salary cap, free agency, don't have the money, kind of maybe. And, and Hilton got burned a lot of times too. Let's be fair. He was a Hilton great Hilton was blitzer. great as a rusher and in, 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 you know, short. Yeah. If you got him, if you got him extended, yeah, you, he was. Yeah. Broke. Which, which leads me to Patrick Peterson. If he's a year older and a step slower. Yeah. You can put him on a tight end. That's what yep. you're going to do. Anyways, you're going to put, you mean to tell me a Landon Roberts skins tight end is going to be any better or Michael Walker or miles Jack. Any of these guys they had to use last year. He and I'm not trying to discount Trenton Thompson playing safety or some of these other roles that are out there either, but I don't see secondary being largely on the radar anymore after those moves to Sean Elliott coming in as safety. I know Eric Rose trying to make a case to maybe come back and compete in camp. I would welcome bringing him back if they feel there's room for him in their plans. Um, I mean, defensively, I don't see a whole lot that they're going to go after, well, after, you def know, defensive line. Defensive line, but how high? We just named it's, two it's, spots: offensive line and wide yeah. receiver as priorities, draft wise. Here's here's my caveat to everything, right? Um, and this is even when I don't toy with EFF. There are there are some top DLs that could drop, and if one of them drops in their lap, I think that they need to jump on it. And the reason is, Cam is older, Larry is older. We have to face the reality. Cam's not going to be here that many more years. And if you can, if you can put a guy in, and I get it, it's talking, but they're hard, right? D line guys are hard to find, and we have enough of a rotation right now. If we can bring in another guy who's a stud that's going to come in and learn and rotate the same way Cam did when he was a first round pick, right? I know he was like deep first round pick, thirty two probably, um, but that's about right. It's it's worth talking about, right? It's not my it's not my preference, right? My preference is O line, but D line, unless they come up with something else that they're gonna do, they they're a little light there. Yeah, they are uh, to some degree. I, I I don't know where Demarvin Leal what happened with him last year. I don't know how much you want to count on Isaiah Loudermilk in that rotation. Keanu Benton was a dude. He was like no no he's custom, a dude no question about custom, it. You just need made. another dude. Yeah, that's the thing. You need another dude. If you're gonna make do a create a stealer, that's what Keanu Benton was. Absolutely. And, and where they got him in the draft. Uh hey, we're the year is, older. This is the year older. that I this is the year that depending on what Keanu Benton does, I get a jersey or a helmet. This is that year. <laughs> I wasn't gonna do it off rookie year because I've been burned now too many times. I'm not buying people's rookie crap no more. <laughs> yeah, I've got uh, you know, there's you know. Foco always sends me the bobbleheads. The Kenny one's sitting down here on the shelf still somewhere. The other one's been already put away. Uh, if you hadn't noticed, Brian. Yeah, I Kenny, saw Russell Kenny, Kenny, Yeah, Juju had to go Kenny's at one point. Kenny had to go. Like, I'm doing the rotation. We'll see. Russell, he's, you know, 
we'll, we'll roll with it for now. I'm like, do, do, <coughs> do you get one of these like knockoff jerseys for 30 bucks of a Russell Wilson? Cause I, you know, I, I have some Kenny stuff that's got to go in the, you know, do, oh, there you go. But I mean, that's timeless. If you're going to do like the, the bobblehead thing, this Wait, is what I'm, this is there. what I'm, this is what I'm about now. Although I almost bought the James Harrison, uh, interception return bobblehead and, but, uh, but I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. Are that, is that one of the FOCO ones too? Cause they primarily have like, yes. yeah, this is they a have, one. so FOCO USA on social yep. media, maybe even .com or something like that. The, the so, sports illustrated thing did it for me. I was like, Nope, gotta get it. Gotta yeah. Have it. They, they have some impressive stuff. I mean, the one I got back here, yeah, I may as well, since we segue to that and we're at the end here, we don't have special teams to really talk about, but Franco Harris, um, just a regular generic Franco Harris. This wasn't, I think they also did like an immaculate, um, immaculate reception one as well. Yeah. So, but they, uh, with the old, uh, three river stadium, like they, they have some really cool stuff. Sometimes it's overwhelming, but a lot of them are, uh, for the most part, limited pieces. So we put those out on social media from time to time to help promote those for FOCO. So, Hey, give them a little nod on the show there too. Like an actual nod. See, I'm punny. Um, bobbleheads, but I yeah. gotta go find my, my, my bobbleheads. <laughs> I gotta bring the bob. gotta bring the bobblehead back for predictions. Yeah. So about the only positions we didn't discuss, Brian, which is like really strange. It's the positions that everyone bitched about. They didn't address and they went and did during Ben's last year, running back and tight end. It yeah. makes you wonder what would we be saying about those positions had they went and gone like a Creed Humphrey route or something like that. So, but they don't need anything. I think their Kofers are pretty good right now. Najee Harris, Jalen Warren. Then you look at the tight ends with uh, Pat Fryermuth, Darnell Washington, Connor Hayward. So pretty, pretty good there. I just, I, I wonder where they'll eventually come up on the defense. We're looking at maybe the first three picks are all offense. And when you have a historically bad offense, like they did last year and all the moves that they made in free agency, it makes a hell of a lot of sense to stick there uh, versus, you know, they could still maybe add some pieces for depth or whatever free agency. There's a lot of usual suspects on this list, like Chris warmly. Uh, I think Tyson Alou Alou is now retiring so, but they still show yeah. him as a free agent. Uh, and there's a lot of guys north of 30 if they were to look at them and maybe kick the tires on. Even Al Woods is still maybe floating around out there. Good old Al Woods made a very long career in the NFL despite having a very short one in the Steel City. So I always like seeing that. But yeah, uh, other than that, I mean, inside linebacker, they, they edge depth is even good with uh, Nick Herbig that's sitting there. We don't talk a whole lot when you got guys that are making a lot of money like TJ Watt or uh, Alex Highsmith, same with safety when you got Minka Fitzpatrick. So I think they're, um, I mean, they, they really had their safety depth tried, you know, last year. Boy, did they ever. Yeah. So, but uh, how do you prevent that? It's, you know, how much more can they add in with the picks that they have? I think we're pretty sold on those top three needs being center. You think center's mo numero uno, most important? I, I, I personally do. I, I could be okay mm -hmm. with tackle being numero yes. uno. Yes. That's what but I was going to say. In my, in my gut, you build from the inside on the offensive line. You don't build from the outside in. You build from the inside out. And, it, and that the, the thing that they need, they need a stud at center and they don't have one. And they, to get one, I think they're going to have to go first round. But, but if the guys, you know, if the Bengals take whatever his name is from Oregon, <laughs> right? If somebody ab above them takes their guy, and there's a tackle sitting there who is a right tackle, and that's his his you know ideal position, and he's he's a top level tackle. Well, then that's where you go. I yeah. don't want him to reach for a center, right? Correct. Yeah, correct. That's where I'm at as well. Is 22 rich? And they talked about this. I I heard guys talk about it on um the, you know the various radio shows. You know that the Cowboys absolutely got grilled years ago for now I'm thinking of the guy who left there Beatus, but it was um, the guy who got hurt, Travis Frederick. They got grilled for that. And it's like, well, that worked, but that worked. The Raiders got grilled for Alex Leatherwood. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's like, there's always that flip side of the coin. Marcus Gilbert, one of the more underrated tackles probably in Steelers history, right tackle went pick 63 overall second round yeah. back in 2011 but you also had somebody like David DeCastro fall to pick 24 
And don't forget, Marquise Pouncey was the 18th overall pick uh, back in 2010. Those three years in a, or uh, three years in a row where they kept adding to that offensive line really helped. I could see them continue. That might be a continuation where maybe you get one of those pieces this year, and then add another one next year as well. Because Broderick yep. Jones may have started those dominoes falling. So, absolutely. Yep. All right, my friend. Great show. Thanks for returning. Thanks for hanging and banging with us. So. Draft, uh, we're now turning that direction, right? About yeah, well, I guess, I, I, guess I got to put together a scenario for mock draft insanity. Huh? Yes, yes. We're going to get you um, front and center, and we'll have it right on the screen as best we can. Maybe we even we, we may even be going live here soon. So it's oh. been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. And, you know, sometimes it's a production, and, and it takes a little more effort but we know on draft night we'll prep everyone now whether you're new or returning uh thank you for uh watching listening wherever you may be don't forget to like comment subscribe leave a rating or review and we may be going live on youtube well we will be going live on youtube i think uh when the nfl draft hits so at least on I, I gotta warn you in advance i won't be around friday or saturday for the draft what the hell's wrong with you well that's okay as long as i get flash sober We'll get yeah. you for the first night on Thursday. You, you got me for Thursday, then, but Friday and Saturday, if you get me, yeah. I'm going to be out in a cabin someplace in the woods. <laughs> Clever excuses. Is, how are you going to pay attention to the draft? You got well, Starlink? They, they <laughs> you got these things, right? You, you, got, you carry reception? little computers around in your hand all day now, and I got I, this is all I need. It'll tell me what's going on. I will have my, you know I don't go anywhere without my laptop. Right. So I will have my laptop with me. So if there is Wi-Fi somewhere near it, mm -hmm. so it's brothers can't my brothers, my two younger brothers and I are okay. gonna we have a, a brothers weekend. For whatever reason, my my mentally deficient Bengals brother, Bengals fan brother, who as I've said, got dropped on his head when he was young, probably me dropping him on his head. I, so maybe it's my fault he's a Bengals fan. Um <laughs> but he got dropped on his head, he's a Bengals fan. My that brother decided the weekend of the NFL draft is the best weekend for us to have our brother's weekend. And he's, he's a, he's a Bengals fan. I mean, he's, well, I guess that counts as a football fan. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Um, he's really an Ohio state fan, but he's definitely an Ohio state fan masquerading um, as a Bengals fan on yes. the side. <laughs> so we're going to be somewhere uh, in a, in a cabin someplace uh, hiking and doing stuff and, uh, you know, farting around a fire. Uh, I don't know. Um, but, but you know, late at night, there's not much to do. You can't go hiking late in the woods. Maybe, and who knows? My, that that could be challenging because then the Bengals fan might show up in the podcast. I don't know. <laughs> I was going to ask you, your other brother's an Eagles fan. What does he think about receiving Kenny Pickett via trade? Uh, I haven't actually talked to him about oh, it. Oh, all I, right. I we want to know. But, I will tell you. I live in Eagles world, right? That's where mm -hmm. I live. And I can tell you since, since the off season started, the number of people here who I see on a regular basis, who I know are football fans, I can go to the local diner, right? I go down to the diner and get me some omelets and stuff, right? When I go down there, at least three guys will have asked me consistently, Bang, the Steelers going to trade for, for Justin Fields? They're going to trade for Justin Fields? I've heard they're going to trade for Justin Fields. And I have repeated to them exactly what I've said to everybody. I wouldn't do it for a first, for sure. I wouldn't do it for a second. Start to get to the third round, I might consider it, but ideally I wouldn't do it. And I would do it as cheap as I can. And they were, and I was like, because, you know, if you're really making it, but not as a starter, I'm like, if you do it, all the things we've talked about, right? So you guarantee they all have said this to me now. Nobody said a word about Kenny Pickett. They could care less about Kenny Pickett. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's unfortunate, uh, Brian, but we want to, inquiring minds wanted to know. I know other people have asked me over in Bengals land and Browns land, since I get a little bit of both over here in Ohio, uh, how I felt about the quarterback room. And I've given them the same kind of feedback that I do on the show. I'm not going to tell them, go watch a Steelers show because they're not going to do that. And then they'll be upset unless their name is Charles. Charles. Yeah, yeah unless, unless you're Charles. Unless you're Charles so. Hi, Charles. How you yeah. doing? <laughs> well, anyways, folks, that'll do it for us. Um, glad to have you back. I know it's been, in, uh, it's been a while for you. It's been over a week since we have done a show. It's just, you know, we'll try and keep you informed. We may be a little bit of uh, some short 
format episodes that come out uh, over the course of the next couple of weeks, depending on if we get any other major news, anything that's noteworthy. I was uh, just perusing, you know, the the old the old Twitter, the X, trying to see if there's anything dropping, and there just you isn't. Want some shorts? I can give you shorts. Not, oh, and I don't geez. mean I don't mean underwear shorts. I can give you shorts. I can I'll give you some mock draft insanity shorts. Mock draft and say, I, yeah, and it becomes insane because of how busted these simulators are. They seem like they get worse every year. So it's just for, you know, it's entertainment value at most. But let me just, there's ways to make them worse. Oh, we love <laughs> right? making them worse. Why not? Let's do it. So if I'm going to use, especially, you know, if I'm going to mock mock drafts, did we do the mock mocking the mock draft show? We usually do one of those. Anyway, yeah, um, that's coming. That's good. That'll be coming. So, but when I, if you know, if there is a mock draft simulator I want to make look foolish, it's the PFF one, right? Because the wizardly world of PFF is not my friend. So, I, I, if there's any one that I want to make look as dumb as possible, it's that one. And the problem is, it's just really easy. <laughs> sounds, sounds like a date, but we're going to start doing that. We already gave kind of a look at the Steelers' needs in this episode. So, folks, um, thanks for joining us. Thanks for supporting us wherever you may be watching or listening. And make sure you mark your calendar down for some live shows uh, within the next month around the NFL draft. And until next time, um, as we always do on the show, my name's Joe. His name's Brian. We encourage everyone out there to be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website www.steelcityunderground.com